Hello everyone, yet another news update for you today, this time regarding mods and mod slots. I think there's a lot of good in here, maybe one or two not as good, but still kind of okay. But I guess you'll be the judge of that. Who is ready to watch 11 and a half minutes of mod and armor b-roll? Because it better be you or you're not going to have a good time here. So armor mods. One of the biggest community concerns of the past year has been making all armor mods that affect your weapons element neutral. That means hand cannons, snipers, grenade launchers aren't void specifically, shotguns aren't arc, autos aren't solar, everything can be used with any armor energy type. Well, the community has gotten their wish. All of the weapon-oriented armor mods have been changed to any energy type. In addition, all arc charged with light mods now activate their second perk if you have any arc mods or any other arc charged with light mods socketed in any other armor piece that you're wearing. While I personally didn't mind having to make decisions on my armor elements, this change is certainly going to make things a lot easier to manage for literally everyone who plays this game. This is great news to a lot of people, and I think that's all that really needs to be said. Fewer armor pieces are needed, you can start clearing out your vaults, less farming required, less RNG, music to people's ears, I assume. However, this means that your mod inventory is going to have a lot more pages because of normal mods and enhanced mods clogging things up. Or will it? You see, Bungie thought of that too. And that's part of the reason why they're completely ditching normal mods and replacing them with the enhanced versions of the mods. The other part is because players often felt like they needed to stack multiple of the normal or even multiple of the enhanced mods to even feel like something was happening. So instead of a normal and an enhanced version of a mod, enhanced is now the new normal and normal mods are gone. The new normal will be as strong as the current enhanced mods are. As a result, the base mods energy costs have been adjusted upwards slightly, but they're still lower than the equivalent enhanced mods cost. Some mods will be moved around to create a little more competition in those mod sockets. This is another great change. I can't really see a reason to be upset at this, although I do have one thing that we'll talk about at the end of the video. Less armor mod congestion in my armor mod menus. The benefits are stronger. What's not to love? Well, allow me to bring you right back down into the depths of hell, or potentially even higher into the heavens with this next piece of information. Raid mods. Starting in Season 12, Last Wish, Garden, and the new raid will drop armor that has a fifth dedicated armor mod socket that is exclusively for the mods related to that raid. Okay, Datto, that sounds pretty good though. What's, what's bad about that? Well, how about the fact that this is not retroactive? Last Wish and Garden armor obtained before Season 12, aka Beyond Light, will not have this socket, but at least will still be able to use said mods in the socket that they currently go into right now. Oh, I, I'm not, uh, we're not done. Now, this is the big one. This is the big one right here. Anti-Taken mods, aka Taken mods, from Last Wish will only function in Last Wish. Anti-Hive mods, aka Hive mods, from Leviathan Raids will be deprecated. Anti-Fallen mods, aka Fallen mods, from Scourge will be deprecated. Barrier mods, armament mods, they are basically dead. Why? Well, let's start with the first part, the fifth mod slot. We all know how annoying it is to constantly switch back and forth between raid mods and non-raid mods in our armor sets. I have two full Garden of Salvation armor sets, one with Garden mods... Yes, but from your fiance this time. Get out. One with Garden mods and one without, 
solely so I don't need to swap the mods back and forth. It's annoying. The fifth slot makes it so I only need one set now because the fourth slot that I normally needed to use for the raid mods can be used for anything, while that fifth slot can hold the raid mods. That's great! That's amazing! That's a great quality of life change in many ways! Now raid mods will feel like a true bonus to your gear set as opposed to replacing your normal mods. The fact that it's not retroactive though. That's not as great! People have been farming the raids for weeks now thinking that they'd be set for the future. And to be fair, you still are. It's not like whatever gear you farmed is completely irrelevant, but it's still a pretty large inconvenience. I don't know if this is an intended decision by Bungie or if this is the result of some behind the scenes engineering that just couldn't make it work out though. You know, I, I just don't know. It's either way, it's unfortunate to say the least. But let's talk about the future non-power ammo dropping ogre in the room. Raid mods. They're dead. They're really super dead. I mean, Last Wish mods aren't, but, you know, let's be real. They're they're dead. And personally... Oh, which way is he gonna go? Oh, which way is he gonna go? Personally, I'm kind of happy that armaments are dead, but this is pretty much a love it or hate it decision. You're either tired of armaments or you love armaments. No amount of arguments will ever change your mind, so I'm not even going to try. I think armaments are at least top three in terms of why Gambit is not fun. They create a lot of balance issues for the designers. They have to design things in mind knowing that people could have potentially unlimited power ammo. I'll put it this way. They would have had to design the new raid with the knowledge that people could have had near unlimited power ammo and a permanent 20% damage reduction. And we wonder why Bungie can only kill us with one-shot abilities. Also, no one likes armament mod infinite machine gun ammo invader guy in Gambit, but I assume you knew that already, Greg. The last note we have is the combat mod slot. All armor released in Beyond Light Season 12 all raid gear acquired after season 12, and all armor 2.0 exotic armor, including those already possessed by players, will have a combat style mod socket which will accept charged with light and war mind cell mods. This is huge for exotic armor. Oftentimes, I found myself struggling with picking an exotic or a legendary that could fit one of those mods into my build. Now, exotics will come with an extra slot, so you don't need to pick. Could you argue that picking is part of the build design process? Sure. Do I think people are going to be happy that they can do both now? Yeah. Yeah. Charge with light. It's going to be the future. And I start mentally preparing for that one. I mean, War Mind Cell mods are good too, but, you know. Charged with light. That's, it's up there. A quick note here. The fact that Bungie can adjust exotics that we currently own with a new slot, but not raid gear that we currently own with a slot, makes me believe that this is an issue that they could not fix on the engineering side of the game. I don't think this was a design decision based on that information alone, but yeah, I could be wrong. People will still be able to get season 12 edition old raid armor before the new raid launches, unless the raid happens to launch on the same day as the expansion or they block people from getting old raid loot. But exotics have no power cap and legendaries do. So I assume things might not be as easy to tweak. Again, that is just an assumption. It could very well be a very specific decision on Bungie's end. If only Bungie could clarify in a tweet or next week's TWAB. Really soon, preferably. Finally, all Armor 2.0 armor obtained during Season 8 through 11, that's this past year, are having their seasonal mod socket turned into a legacy mod socket that can fit all Charged with Light, War Mind Cell, Nightmare Hunt, Garden of Salvation, and Last Wish mods. This was done likely because gear from older seasons is going to be outdated during the year, and having to micromanage outdated gear would have been really annoying and stupid. 
having to fix that slot every time a new season rolls around also would have been really cumbersome for Bungie. So screw it, they're all merged, no more memorizing what armor against what mods, or oh, I, can't, I forgot, I can't socket this mod into that one. They just, everything, everyone gets everything. The only thing that is a little worrisome to me is loss of decision making. A lot of these changes make it so you don't really have to make as many decisions. You just get everything. You don't need to think about it. You don't need to think about elemental types, energy types, stacking certain mods, exotic versus legendary. You don't need to think about that stuff anymore. There are definitely plenty of decisions you still do need to make in the game. What kind of build, what mods go in the build, what am I sacrificing when I do X versus Y. But you could argue as well that a lot of the more annoying or less player friendly decisions were the decisions that are being toned down or removed. That's it. That's the mod news video. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Oh, also quick sponsored shout out, I guess. You can now use code DATO at checkout for Astro as opposed to the link that I usually plug. Or you can do both. Or you can just keep using the link. It's your choice. Also, evolvepcs.gg code DATO. All right, I'm done. Bye.